Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial on Revit and in this tutorial I'll be showing you how to detail a eaves haunch over here. So just left click on this and click on edit type so that we can get started. And click on edit here under the modify parameters row. And I'll go through each uh, one of these three main uh, drop downs. And I'll go through each tab that is found in each of these drop down windows. So for the first part here. Uh, for the haunch, you can either have it on this side or other side. This side means that the haunch will be over here. If you choose other side, it will be on the top, which is not the correct haunch we need for our connection here. So we need this side. And for the profile, if you choose none, it means that you will not have any haunch. If you choose profile, the haunch will be based on the dimensions of your rafter. And if you choose plates, Basically, you're going to use a set of plates welded together to form a haunch. So in this case, you'll have uh, one, two, and three plates. Or just uh, two plates for the haunch and one plate for the end plate here. And for the length measurements, there are quite a few options. So there's length from inner end plate face. So basically, it means that you're measuring from the inner side here of the end plate to the end over here. And if you choose the second option, basically you're measuring from the column flange here to the end of your column here. And finally, if you're using the third option, length from column axis, you're basically measuring from the middle of your column all the way to the end of your haunch connection over here. So in this case, I'll be just keeping it at length from inner uh, end plate face. And for the length of this haunch, since the span is about 10 meters and the minimum requirement is about 10% of your span length, so I'll just keep it at 1 meter. So for the height measurements, you can see that there are many options here. The first option implies that you'll be measuring your haunch depth based on the top of your rafter to the bottom of your haunch. The second option measures your height of your haunch from the middle of your rafter to the bottom of your haunch and the third option measures from the bottom of your rafter to the bottom of your haunch and the fourth and final option measures from the web depth of your rafter to the bottom of your haunch and it's going to be a diagonal dimension here as you can see for number two so in this case, I'll be using the third option, and I'll just keep it at 0 0.3 uh, meter depth. You can see that chamfer uh, 1 refers to this part here. So I put it at 0. You'll see that it will have no cut over here. And chamfer 2 refers to uh, this corner here. So if I put this to 0, there'll be no cut there and finally chamfer 3 refers to this corner here so I'll just keep it at 0 so in this case I will not have any chamfers in any of the three locations and for the web plate thickness so basically it refers to the plate over here and in this case I'll just keep it at 1 centimeter thickness so that it will be the same thickness as my end plate and the flange plate thickness refers to this plate here. So if I increase this to 0 0.02, you'll see that it becomes thicker. So this part here will affect your flange plate thickness, as you can clearly see. So I'll just keep it at 0 0.01. And flange plate width refers to how wide this flange plate is from here to here. So if I were to play around with this and say put uh, 0 0.2 here, you'll see that it will increase in width. So that uh, right now it's basically wider than the uh, rafter. So in this case, I'll just keep it at 0 0.17 so that it's just as wide as the uh, rafter here. So moving on to the next uh, tab. This is about additional plates, so in this case I won't be doing anything here. I will just keep it at uh, this default uh, 
look. And for the additional rafter, I'll in include one going down this way because I would need a uh, extra set of purlins to go down this way because my roof is uh, extending downwards here. So I'll click on additional rafter and click on this uh, drop down arrow. Go to all, scroll down and find the UK universal beam. And in this section, I'll be using uh, 305 uh, 40. And the length direction, uh, you can either have it as slope like this or horizontal uh, this way. So in this case, I'll just keep it at slope and I'll change the length to about 0 0.35. And for the distance from the top, this will basically set an offset uh, for your rafter here, additional rafter. So distance from the top will affect whether or not you will have any offset from the top over here. So if I put in 0.3, it will go downwards. If I put in minus 0.3, it will go up. In this case, I will have no offset because I want uh, the, the cap plate here to go and uh, fit nicely. So in this case, I just want the cap plate and the rafter to form one straight line downwards like this. So I'll therefore keep this distance from the top as zero. And if you choose horizontal, basically it will make your additional rafter horizontal, which is not what I want in this case. So I'll just untick this. So for the end plate, there are quite a few options here. It's similar to the first video I made on apex haunches. So the thickness, I'll keep it at one centimeter. And the construction gap, I'll keep it at zero because I don't want a gap. And for end plate, length type is projection from top and from bottom. So projection means that the end plate length will follow how uh, large the dimension from here to here is. So if this dimension from here to here increases, then basically your length for your end plate will increase. But if you choose any of the other options, like exact value from top or from bottom, basically you can key in any value that you want. So if you're choosing from top, basically it's uh, drawing from top down. So if I increase this to one meter, it'll go down. And if I choose from bottom, basically it's from the bottom up. So going back to projection, I'll just uh, use this option because I want the end plate to follow the dimension from here to here. And projection top is basically a offset that you can set for the top of your end plate and projection bottom is a is an offset you can set for your end plate at the bottom. So in this case I'll just keep it as is. And for the end plate width you can either choose exact value or projection. If you choose projection basically it will follow the width of your rafter. If you choose exact value, you can key in any value you want. And if you choose projection, you can see that there's projection left and right. Basically, these settings will help adjust the end plate to the left or to the right. So you choose to change it. So in this case, if I want to extend it by 5 centimeters to the left and 5 centimeters to the right, you can see that the end plate will be extended to the left and right respectively based on these uh, dimensions here. So in this case, I'll just keep it at zero. And moving on to the cap plate, you can see that there are quite a few options here as well. So if you choose none, basically you won't have any cap plate here. In this case, I want to have a cap plate, so I'll just click on full. And the rest of the options are quite obvious. So half means that you only have half of a full cap plate. And if you choose value, you can type in any value that you want. So in this case, I'll just choose full. So this plate length will be grayed out. Plate width will increase the dimension in this direction here. So if I change it to 0 0.4, you'll see, you see that it will ex extend in this direction here. So in this case, I'll just keep it at 0 0.2. And plate gap, 
refers to the gap between the cap plate to the end plate over here. Okay, so moving on to bolts and welds, so the diameter of my bolt will be in millimeters, so I need to change this to a Eurocode standard, so I'll choose EN14399-3 for hexagon bolts that are preloaded, and I will choose a 20 millimeter bolt and a grade of 8.8, .8. and there are quite a few options left in this tab, so I'll go through them quickly. So distance to previous bolt will affect uh, the vertical spacing. So in this case, I'll just keep it as tick. If you uncheck bolts on gauge line, you will basically have the ability to change where you want to place your bolts. So I need to go and uh, uncheck these bolts on gauge line because I want to move this slightly to the right. Or I want to move this inwards. So basically, I want to make it uh, about 0.08 so that there's some spacing between the edge of the end plate and the bolt. And number per side will affect the number of vertical bolt groups you have. So in this case, if I have two, you can see I have uh, two on this side and two on the other side. And I can change the spacing to say one meter just to exaggerate it. So just so we can see what this intermediate distance does. So I won't be having multiple uh, vertical bolt groups in one side, so I'll just keep this at one. And basically inverted will only change the orientation between where the bolt head and the washer will be. So if I click invert here, the washer will be here and the bolt head will be here. So I'll just keep this untick. Bolt groups would be kept at uh, two in group 1 and 2 in group 2 and the start distance I'll just keep it as the same as my previous video so I'll just put it at 0 0.1 and intermediate distance I'll just keep it at uh, 0 0.1 as well and for bulk group uh, 2 I'll just keep it at 0 0.2 so that it will not be over here for the first uh, bolt. And moving on to standard welds, I'll just keep all of these at one centimeter and additional welds will be kept at one centimeter as well. Reinforcing, I won't have any additional reinforcing in the bolt group. So for bolts and holes over here, uh, it basically means that you can make a cutout in your end plate. So if I choose plate here, and I typed in one meter here. You can see that there's a cut down the end plate here. And this is not what I want at all. So I'll just uh, keep it at none. Then again, there are other options here. You can play around with it. If you choose all, you will cut your column and your end plate. And for this case, I'll just keep it at none. So we won't be touching that. So for this video, I'll be talking about stiffness one only. and I won't be in including other stiffeners as well because otherwise it'll be uh, too complicated for this connection and it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense to put that much stiffener in a normal uh, roof arch. So in this case, I'll just click on none over here because I don't need a stiffener at the top because there's a cap plate. As you can see, if I were to put a stiffener here, you'll see that it'll be floating here. And even if I were to go check on stiff, even if I were to go and check on the slope button here, it would be placed at the same location as the as the cap plate. So I will just uh, skip this stiffener one. For stiffener two, I'll uh, choose a full plate here, and stiffener three, I'll choose another full plate, and stiffener four, I'll also use a full as well. And I've already added all the necessary stiffness for this uh, connection that I'm detailing here. So now that we've already finished detailing our eaves haunch connection, we can just click on the OK button now and click on Apply and click on OK. So there you go. We've already detailed this eaves haunch connection. So I've already added this additional rafter here so that we can 
add more purlins down this way because the roof has actually uh, extended uh, further down. And that's it for this video, folks. If you do like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to watch more Revit tutorials or civil engineering related softwares, do consider subscribing. It's free. And as always, I hope you're safe in these unprecedented times and keep learning. Goodbye.